wind kicking up as usual. I think you can hear me with this cool microphone I'm using. But I can't tell you how many times I've been in these mountains on the motorcycles, having a blast, experiencing this epic scenery, seeing incredible wildlife, really cool stuff. Like one year I was on the 1190 right here and I was down on this road down there and I saw a freaking ferret fighting a ground squirrel and I filmed it. I put it on the B channel. That is the Nut and Fancy Project in YouTube. Go check it out. It was filmed right here. But guess what? I was all alone. There was no one to experience that with me. And I'm not coming two up on a motorcycle, not through this terrain. That's insane. Yeah, it sucks. So I get back from that ride. I'm excited. I want to ex I want to share the experience with my wife. Here she comes again. And I tell Mrs. Nut and Fancy about the incredible ferret and ground squirrel fight. And she goes, she listens. She goes, oh, that's cool. And she goes, uh, well, anyways, Big Brother's on tonight. Are you watching it with me? It's different if you ain't there. Yeah, so it's great having the wife with me. It's great having Dog Diggity with me. And in a side-by-side, -side, you can get to more places than you can a truck, right? And I like that. I like that. Another thing is cargo capability. Look at how much I can carry. That thing holds a thousand pounds and it's dumpable. Look at this. So I can actually load it up with steel targets, ammunition, go out and test to, in places I can't get to in my truck. Cargo capability. I'll load up the KTM 1190, which I absolutely love. It's an adventure. But dude, that thing's gonna weigh like, I don't know, 600 pounds. You know, ammunition, three rifles, four, five rifles. And if I lay it over, I gotta unload it, pick it back up. It's, it's, I love it, it's fun, I'll still do it, but I'm very limited in cargo capability. This much less so. Another thing is weather and road conditions, or I should say trail conditions. This thing can tackle mud, water, it can do stream crossings. Good luck doing that in your KTM. I mean, you can, I have, but when I'm out remote like this and I'm alone, I drive it more conservatively than when I'm in a group, right? Because if I dump it, if I get hurt, I'm all alone. I hope you do that as well. So we came up through some mud and some water crossings on this road, nothing too major, but I probably would not have done it on the 1190. Maybe the 690 I would have, uh, the 500 I definitely would have, but the bigger the bike, the more reticent I am about crossing mud. So that is a perspective from a motorcycle guy, why he is interested in a side-by-side. -side. That is its own philosophy of use. You know, if that's boring to you, I apologize. You can, you know, hit the 1.5 speed function in YouTube, rip past it, or just drag the slider bar to when I talk about the features. I think most guys, especially motorcycle guys, will totally relate to what I'm saying. Philosophy of use, bug out vehicle. Uh, yeah, you can. I think actually though, you're probably better served by a pickup truck. It has more cargo capability, has a better range, it won't be able to go to the same places that the Ranger will, and for that matter, any you know ATV or UTV, but um, you get more capabilities. And this thing is really slow, I think, on the road. I mean, you're lucky if you get 54 miles an hour out of it, and it's struggling. Uh, I, bug out location really is situationally dependent. Where are you going? How far are you going? What kind of terrain are you going to over? If it is very technical, if you're going through, you know, uh, trails that are about 60, you know, I don't know, 65, 80 inches wide. This might be your best choice. Might be the best bug out vehicle. Another philosophy of use on this specifically, the Ranger XP1000 Northstar is a cabin taxi. There are a lot of people that have cabins and they have to go over and navigate very technical terrain to get to them. Probably more technical than they want to do with a truck. Now a Jeep can tackle the same thing this can, and I think that's a great thing to consider versus this, is getting a Jeep versus a Ranger or a Defender. I totally get that. This is more narrow still. It'll go into more places, I think, and I think it rides softer. That is a consideration. But a philosophy of use for these, cabin taxi. So maybe you have to drive 20 miles to get to your cabin over very narrow trails. Here you go, perfect philosophy of use. Then of course the obvious ones. Uh, work vehicle, you know, like if you're a farmer down in Texas, hauling stuff, bales of hay, firewood, 
uh, fencing materials, all the things farmers use them for. You can use it as a hog hunting vehicle down in Texas, hunting those hogs that are everywhere. Great philosophy of use. Um, I think the primary one for most folks will be an adventure and recreational vehicle. Getting to places like this and just having a good time. That's philosophy of use. Yeah, Whew. man. I could actually speak another 20 minutes on that because it's so fascinating. It's the first time we've had exposure to this type of vehicle in TMP. So there's a lot to say. Like I said, this isn't your five minute video. This is uh, feature length. It will be entertaining and you will be riveted. I guarantee it. <laughs> On to the walk around, what you've probably been waiting for. Remember, I am a potential buyer of this vehicle, the Polaris Ranger XP1000 North Star and its competition, the Can-Am Defender Max XT Cab. Both of these vehicles, by the way, have extraordinarily long names. Holy cow, they're like four names. Shorten it up, guys, shorten it up. I know there's a lot of different models within their lines, I get it. But as a shopper, going back to philosophy of use, uh, you know what I'm talking about, using this to review with, going out and adventuring with it, I want something fully enclosed. You're seeing one of the reasons why right now, and we just visited it. My wife, which somehow found a cell signal, she's talking on the phone, but she's warm and she's comfortable and she's smiling. Do you see her smile there? So she's smiling because she's warm. Now guys, if you want to bring your wife with you, you probably want to make her happy and comfortable. Get a fully enclosed side-by-side. -side. I predict right here in this video that these will be the norm in years to come. I think the more people that experience a fully enclosed, I'm talking like a factory enclosed with high quality enclosures, not like bolt on plastic, plexiglass windows around a regular ATV. That's not what I'm talking about. This is all factory. This is tempered factory glass. Notice it's tinted. This is automotive saf uh, safety glass. So is this tinted. Windows that roll up and down. Look at this, fully enclosed heating, air conditioning. Make your occupants, make yourself comfortable. You're not eating dust the whole time. So when I look around, there's really only two makers putting together what I want as a buyer. Again, Polaris and Can-Am. I think honestly, from what I know, and I've done a ton of research on them, you're gonna be happy with either vehicle. They're both excellent. They're both excellent. And I'm looking, of course, at the six person. I kind of think of it as a four person, but technically you can fit three people up front, three people in the back, closing doors, plus a ton of cargo. This is an adventure vehicle, guys. This is something that can get it done. Oh, and by the way, when you get the six person version of these, I call them the crew models, they have adjustable seats. Polaris, the bottom seat will come forward and back. So tall guys will have some adjustability. Short guys will have some adjustability. You won't get that, I don't think, in the two-person version of the XP1000. And this North Star does come in, I call it two-person, it's actually a three-person. But I like this size. The downside is I'm gonna get a longer wheelbase, which means I could high center it when I'm doing some climbs. We just did a full day of motoring this thing around in the mountains. I didn't see it to be a problem. Not yet, I'm still learning. I'm not the expert on this. I, I got to drive it a lot more in a lot, diff, a lot of different environments to find out what it's really capable of. It is longer and it's not a 50 inch ATV. So it's not going to be able to fit into those really cool 50 inch ATV trails that you see uh, like in central Utah, southern Utah, epic ATV trails. You need a bigger trail. But what you do, I'm really talking about SAWC to my viewers. You guys know what that means. Size and weight constraints. So it's basically firepower versus mobility again. We've lost a little bit of mobility, a little bit wider, definitely heavier, definitely longer, a little bit more complex. We've got you know window glass that adds weight, but look at what we get in return. Look at what we get in return. We get basically a comfortable, uh, I don't know, SUV style of vehicle, fully enclosed. Again, my wife is comfortable right now. That makes me happy. Do you want me to roll those windows up? Are you getting cold? Are you okay? Probably want a little bit of ventilation in there, huh? I cannot believe you picked up a cell signal. <laughs> signal. That's amazing. That is amazing. Also, if you want your wife to be happy, get her a cell signal. She'll be super happy then. All right, so that frames my personal approach to how I ended up 
looking at these two vehicles, and I mentioned the Defender Max XT cab because it is in direct competition to this. I think Polaris led the game. They came out with this first. They did the high quality doors, high quality windows. This is their game. And then Can-Am said, oh, we need to compete with that. We're gonna enclose our Defender uh, cab, and they did it. And from what I know about the Defender, it's as good, if not better, than this than this uh, side by side. Again, I think both are fantastic. All right, here comes the official walk around. Again, if you are in a hurry, why are you in YouTube? <laughs> I'm in a hurry. I don't have time for an hour and 20 minute video on the Ranger. Yes, you do. You're probably gonna shut off the video and go play video games for five hours. You have time and you can come back to it and finish it later. That's what I do. I love full length videos in YouTube, love them. Love them. I hate 20 minute videos. Five minute videos are worthless. The only time the guy should do a five minute video is if he's uninteresting and has nothing to say. Then sure, four minutes, 30 seconds, shut it off. There are a couple things I want to show you on the exterior. Before I do it though, I want to read to you the specifications for this 2020 XP1000 North Star, six person. I'm doing this for guys who want to know these specifics and I totally get it because they're important. As you're shopping around for what is a pretty expensive vehicle, these specifications matter. They do matter. So here we go. It's a 1,000 cc four-stroke twin-cylinder DOHC producing 82 horsepower in this version. All this is subject to change. I expect between Can-Am and Defender and perhaps Honda and Kawasaki if they come into this style of enclosed side-by-side the power game is just going to keep going up and up. And by the way, I totally welcome that because I think this thing is underpowered. That's coming again from a motorcycle guy. I think it's slow. Not, not on difficult terrain, but on the road, I, I'm just like, dude, this thing needs to go. I'm climbing the hill on the asphalt. I'm doing like 34 miles an hour in high gear. I had it in standard mode. I didn't want to use perf because I wanted to save gas for this expedition I'm doing now. Uh, we need more power. I like it to have 150. If it's up to me, fuel efficient, 150. Says nothing fancy. But right now, this is an 82 horsepower motor. It, will it get the job done off-road? Oh, yeah. I'm talking more on-road, really. But that's where we're at right now. They say it has high performance on-demand, true all-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, versus track turf mode. So that basically, you have you know one-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. From what I know right now. Uh, engine braking is standard. They got dual arm, 11 inches of travel on this suspension. Front and rear, 11 inches of travel I'm talking about. The tires are 27 by 9 by 12 Maxxis MU51s and 52s. Uh, I think the tires are small on both the Defender and the Ranger. If I got one, I'd put at least 30s on it, says me. The one thing you're going to have uh, to deal with on this North Star is this right here. Look at this distance. There's not a lot of room there. So if you put a bigger tire on, you could have clearance issues. Talk to your dealer. Talk to guys who have them and what they've done. I'm sure there's a ton of information online of what tire fits best. Um, I will say this, though. The tires from what we did today worked pretty well. And we went over some pretty rocky terrain, went through some mud, some water crossings. They're not so bad that I'd go, oh, I got to get rid of these. That's not what I'm saying. But I, I would like more clearance. I would like more shock absorption going over the technical rocks. That's what I'm saying. I think a 30 inch tire makes sense. I think it looks better because these tires on this six person North Star, they just look small. The Can-Am's the same way. The Defender, they just look small. It looks a little bit silly. There you go. And by the way, looks are important. They're really important. And did I mention I love the way this, this thing looks? It's got a mean front end on it. I love the looks of the Polaris XP1000. And they did redesign it for 2019. So this is the newer fascia I think on this one back to the specs the wheels are black accelerator 2.0s they're aluminum not steel I would never run steel tires on an adventure ATV UTV I just wouldn't they rust they're high maintenance the downside is they are more susceptible to damage I think when you get uh, get them smacked in the rocks the off-road guys will tell you all about that 113 inch wheelbase rather long the Defender is even longer, by the way. About 2290 pounds. And I think that's a dry weight, so it is a little bit heavier. You add fluids to it, 11 and a half gallon tank, it's gonna be heavier. Well, that's what it is. 
152 inches long, 65 inches wide, 78 inches tall are the dimensions of this particular vehicle. By the way, they've improved the ground clearance to 13 inches. That's pretty sick. It used to be, I think, 12 inches, but you're looking at 13 inches now on this particular version of the Ranger North Star. I didn't scrape today, didn't. And while we're in here, let's look at that skid plate that comes with it. The Defender has something very similar. I think the Defender's is a little bit better and thicker, but you'll see a plastic ABS skid plate running the full length. I think most guys that are taking these off-road will upgrade that because it gets dinged up uh, a lot from what I've heard. Again, I'm still learning. They have aluminum side rocker panels that you can bolt up. I would highly recommend you putting those on. But, you know, here we go again. Polaris doesn't give them to you standard. You have to go buy them, and they're not inexpensive. So Polaris just kind of nickels and dimes their, their uh, purchasers. They don't give you a lot. I'll talk about that. It'll be kind of a theme as we go. The bed box dimensions, this right here, about 37 by 55 by 13 inches. It's a 1,000-pound capability in that dumping capability as well. Has a tow hitch, two inch receiver hitch, 2,500 pounds on paper towing capacity. I did not test that. It's nice to know it's there. This kind of gets back to the, you know, farm truck philosophy of use or towing a, a boat philosophy of use. I think having a tow capacity on these machines is outstanding. I can see a lot of application for that. And then features wise, what do you get? Electronic power steering, that is standard. Adjustable driver's seat, standard. Tilt steering, standard. Whew, that's specifications. On to my observations. One, I love the bumper on this Ranger. It is excellent. It's got a decent approach angle. I don't have the wheels turned straight because I'm on a hill, and if that, those brakes cut loose, I don't want it rolling down the hill. Then suddenly I have to buy myself a North Star. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But it's not a vertical capability. Again, bigger tires would stack, stick out more and you could actually climb more obstacles. You'll see in comments, guys have a lot of UTV, ATV experience. They'll talk to you about that or yourself if you, you've done it. Your tires stick out. You can actually attack almost vertical obstacles and slowly roll your way over them. That's pretty cool. Um, but I love the bumper. I think it's very functional. It's powder coated steel. Expect rust on it over the years. There's lots of places to bolt accessories. Uh, Polaris for sure has a ton of accessories, additional bumpers. They have a really nice hood rack that will go here and it'll attach uh, a lot of cool accessories from Polaris for sure. One thing that makes me sad is they do not include a winch like Can-Am does. That is a huge miss and they're going to force you to go out either purchase an aftermarket winch and mount it up yourself or buy theirs. Uh, I don't like that. I think it should be included. Can-Am's doing it on their Max XT cap. And again, we see Macy the Mountain Dog eating wood. Why are you eating that, you weirdo? That is gross. Okay, lots of protection up front. Would I replace this bumper? Not yet. I mean, I need more experience. Maybe something happens to this particular bumper and I don't like it. But I think it's fine. You'll notice, by the way, this is a street legal version. And we did use that ex extensively today. This is dealer installed. You'll see the turn signals here. It's got dual side mirrors. It's got a license plate in the back. I recommend you make your street legal as well if you're planning to use it the way I use it. You know, kind of kind of like a dual sport motorcycle. I'm on pavement, I'm off pavement. On pavement, off pavement. Nice capability. Now, these are not arched A-arms on this particular version of the Ranger. The Defender does have them. Is that super, super important? I, I really don't know. You know, I it's a selling point for sure. The more clearance I can get off these A-arms, the happier I am. The more clearance I can get in general, the happier I am. But who knows? You know, these are not arched. Defenders is. It'll be a back and forth game. Maybe one year, Ranger comes out with arched arms. These are just straight arms. They got kind of a protective shield here for your axle. That's cool. CV boots here. There's your adjustability of the shocks. We got them on full soft right now, and I'd probably leave them that way in this terrain. Now, these are not technical Fox off-road shocks like you see in some high-performance Razors, high-performance ATVs you know, with a remote mounted reservoir that has a little knob on it that you can adjust. They're not. Uh, will I replace them if I got one later on? I don't know. I'd run these and just see how I like it. I thought the ride was pretty suppliant. It was good. And again, we were banging over some rough terrain. You know, Mrs. Nutt and Fancy, Dogness and I. 
and uh, I was pretty impressed with it. When it got really rough, I mean, we're feeling it. Uh, I don't have any experience yet in the Defender, so I can't really do a comparison and contrast, but this is another huge advantage of getting this Ranger over perhaps a Jeep or a truck or any other vehicle that would have faster speed, more cargo. These rides so soft, I mean, comparatively speaking. I mean, if you take a Jeep and you do the trails we did, it will definitely do it, but I think it's gonna be more jarring. It will. So this is a more comfortable ride. And as I'm talking, I'm gonna show you inset video of us uh, bombing in the North Star. Now, one thing I, I don't know how I feel I'm learning, but these are sealed bushings throughout the Ranger series. And I've heard tell that they're expensive to replace and you do have to replace them on a schedule. I won't say exactly when, cause I really don't know, but there's no grease nipples. If you get the Defender, it has grease nipples all around. And so you can just use a standard grease gun and grease it up and do the maintenance yourself. And you don't have to go spend $400 on a set of bushings and you know, a whole day putting them in yourself or paying the dealer to do it. And I'd say point Defender. So seal bushings are great, you know, for water crossings and stuff like that, but wear and tear cost, maybe not so great. Uh, four wheel disc brakes on all sides. I thought the brakes were awesome. No ABS, didn't really need it. I think in later years, you'll probably see ABS make its way here to these uh, upscale side-by-sides. Like I say, they're just gonna get better and better and better and better. I'm not gonna pop the hood because uh, I don't wanna make this a two hour video. There's uh, the windshield wiper on this North Star. This used to be plastic, this is an upgrade. So it did not used to be this way. So I love to see that. I would not run a plastic windshield, I would not. It would just get scratched all the heck in my environment. It's rocky, dirty, dusty where I ride these things. And so that dust and dirt's always gonna be on there. You turn on your wiper, it's just gonna go scratch all up windshield fluid used or not hard plastic roof factory installed has a liner in it we'll look at that here in a second the mirrors are good they stayed in position they didn't vibrate too much and maybe i was thinking these polaris mirrors maybe they're not maybe these are aftermarket because i'm looking at the name again this is a rental not mine the one thing i don't like about the mirror on this side is this plastic portion occludes the view about halfway so this occludes that so I don't know, maybe they're not Polaris. The doors remind me of ballistic doors that they used on Humvees when they up-armored the Humvees. Don't they look like it? They look like ballistic doors, but they're hard plastic, they're hollow, they seem strong, they have strong hinges. And by the way, the Can-Ams are about the same. They're no different. The Can-Ams look like this. I'm talking the Defender doors, good hinges. There is some adjustability here. Opening the doors, there is one thing uh, I noticed that's obnoxious, closing them. You almost have to slam them to close them. So here's your locking pin. I grease these up to make them close better. So if you just close them soft, they don't close. You gotta, with the grease, it's better. And then they lock. Uh, there's a rubber retention strap here. How you doing, hon? <laughs> rubber retention strap right there. I think that's gonna wear out and break. It is simple. Uh, I'm surprised, I don't know, they don't have two or something. There's just a single strap. I mean, I'm in 20 mile an hour winds right now. I can imagine in a 40 mile an hour wind, this wind, this suicide opening door, by the way, would catch and that would snap right off. Yeah, just from having experienced other things like that. Notice the seals on this. This is why I say getting one from the factory is, is the way to do it. I mean, this seals up like a freaking autom you know, automobile product. These are awesome seals. This isn't some cheesy plastic tacked on thing to an ATV that's gonna whistle and let wind and dust come in. This is like hermetically sealed. Now we're dusty inside here, but it's because we had the windows down running today. I think that's where the dust came from. Uh, these are manually cranked windows here. There is an option uh, with a Polaris to get electric windows. Uh, this one doesn't have it. Would I get electric? If it was included, sure. But to pay for it, no, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't pay extra for it. It adds weight, complexity, but if it comes on it, sure, I'll take it. Be a nice amenity to have. Let's see how it sounds when we close it on the North Star. Decent, decent. I do like the angle of opening, the suicide angle. So this one the same way. It just seems like it fits well. Uh, one thing I noticed when it was on the trailer, uh, this thing on the trailer that came with it, I rented the trailer too. We only have about this much space to get out. <laughs> I mean, it is tight. So you can barely open the 
to the door to get past the side rail uh, but it's doable uh, enclosed trailer open trailer I don't know I'm still thinking about which is best now if you're wondering this is a relatively new North Star it's only been rented one time before me and uh, so what you're seeing is one that does not have a lot of wear and tear on it. it would be interesting to see one that does and what's broken I suspect here's what I suspect okay you ready that this is going to get crashed by somebody so if you go to the place, which I'll list below, I hope they make it, uh, they're the place I rented from, and ask to rent this, I hope it's still there. But I just talked to the owner and he says he has people crashing his ATVs all the time. They're rolling them, destroying them. That's a shame, I don't know. So I, I hope this one makes it. Uh, you know, in two years in use, it'd be interesting to come back and see what's you know causing problems, what isn't. Okay, this is a tilt bed, let's take a look at it. I did empty it. There's our stuff for the day. Got a cooler, plastic cargo box, hike out boots in case we break, first aid kit, all my survival supplies, stuff in there, Macy's food, lever right here to lift it. Lifts up nicely. Here's your engine compartment for easy access. I would never buy one of these that has a front mounted engine because I found out these are loud. Uh, I mean, I didn't know that until I started driving this, and no one online has ever talked about it. Let me talk to the wife about this. Aren't these loud, hun? Yeah. That's why you see hearing protectors there. We're driving, and that engine noise comes through the back of the Polaris up into our ears, and uh, it'll wear you out. I mean, noise is fatiguing. Oh, she's on the phone. I thought she was talking to me. Yeah, so it's loud. Now, could they do a better job with a firewall, you know, sound insulation? I would say absolutely. Absolutely. Your CVT breathing and your engine breathing are taking place in this stock North Star down here. Um, I would think seriously about snorkeling it out. There's a kit for both the Defender and the XP-1000 that it comes out here. Because if you do a deep water crossing, I would never want to risk washing water up into this area. I just wouldn't want to do it. Uh, I don't know about CVT belt replacement, uh, the wear and tear on them, talking to the guys that are run these, if you run it right, they last pretty good. I think if you're abusing it, you know, and lugging it around and really heating the belt up, it can break. Look underneath, look at the rear suspension, A-arms. There's no sliding window in the back of this North Star. There is in the Defender, I believe. I don't remember if it's an option or not. And I got to replace the battery. Stand by. Now, before we go and look at the back here and then jump inside to look at the ergonomics of this XP-1000 North Star, let us consider just for a moment, please, the awesomeness of this cargo bed. Look at that, boys and girls. Dream about the possibilities. <laughs> Firewood, bales of hay, tools for your cabin, guns, targets, ammunition, camping supplies, cots, tents, the list goes on and on. It's a thousand pound capability. Take that 50 inch side by side. Yeah, they're smaller, they're more nimble, they fit in more places, but they don't carry this. They don't have this capability. And for that matter, they don't have the comfort. They don't have you know the heating, air conditioning, the fully sealed enclosed cab that, again, my wife is totally enjoying. Check that out, she's happy. I love the bed on this. And by the way, the Defender Max XT is no different. It's just as fantastic. In fact, I think it's just a little bit bigger. And this has a flat folding tailgate on it, cables on it. I did notice that it rattles just a little bit like that. And I didn't really notice it because the engine was so damn loud, to be honest. But at the dealership, I'm looking at them and I'm like, that's not great. I go over to the Defender XT and it's like solid as a rock. Go figure. Not a big point. Here's your release handle right here. Uh, again, you can go to Polaris or heck, just go to eBay. And uh, I'll put some links below, by the way, for the accessories that I really like for this. And you can get you know high sides for it. You can get uh, cargo shelves. There's a freaking uh, winch arm that you can put on the back of this Polaris. And I have a friend, they did it. It's a powered winch. And when they went elk hunting, they just tilted the bed and they had their winch arm and they just drug the elk inside this huge bed. How is that? Again, getting back to the hunting POU. Okay, here's a quick look at the back of this newish North Star. Receiver hitch, back end area. 
There's your ground clearance once again. We do have some angled A-arms here in the back. Although specifically, I don't think uh, Polaris brags about that. Not so much. Okay, in we go. I may have to kick out Mrs. Nothing Fancy as I do an interior review. Hey, girlfriend, I got to do some filming in here, so you got to go outside. Sorry, you're going to freeze. Okay, this is a wide opening door. So if you're a big guy, I think you'll be able to fit. I'm 6'3", 210 pounds currently. Uh, if I eat a lot of pizza, I'm like 214. Here's a side, hard plastic, expect it to get scratched up. I mean, that's a ATV, UTV life. It's just going to get scratched up. And it's kind of built for that, so I don't really care. There's a grab arm and a side brace to protect you. I guess that's to hold you in place in case of a rollover or something. I don't really notice that bothering me as I'm driving today. Looking at you like, ah, aren't you banging into that? Didn't notice it. I think the seats are comfortable. More so than I thought. Like when I first saw them, I was like, yeah, they're pretty good. And I was wondering if they'd like get hard, if I'd feel the base underneath. Not in these new Polaris XP1000. They're, they're nice. These are nice seats. Now the Defender seat, I'm talking the Can-Am product, they come out a little bit further, which I like better. Because I'm tall and, uh, you know, I would like this much more uh, length on the seat bottom for thigh support. And I don't have that with this. Uh, not a showstopper, still excellent. One thing I did notice is I got confused between these uh, tie-in points for the seat belt. I was connecting to this one. And if you do that, you're going to be limited, limited to like 25 miles an hour. This thing has a safety circuit in. If you're not seat belted in, it won't go as fast as it can. There's your headliner right here. I love the coloration on it. It's just simple gray. Does reduce the noise a little bit. Looks great. This is the one outfitted with a wiper. There's your washer, wiper control in that control box. Now this is not a ride command ranger. Ride command is like a full screen up here. It's kind of, it kind has all these funky and actually really useful functions in it. It's gonna cost you more. If you get a ride command option with it, prepare to pay. But I probably recommend it. It's really nice to have. I personally don't need it. I mean, I have my own handheld GPS. I can put an iPad up there with Topo on it. There's a lot of different ways to work around it. Nice to have. Steering wheel is excellent. Here's your tilt function on the steering wheel. It goes up and down. Let me lower this again. Um, they could probably do something better on the steering wheel to make it, you know, higher end. It's just kind of cast plastic. It's basic. I think the Can-Ams is just a little bit better, but I'm just going off memory here. Again, I put a little bit of grease on this to make the door close better. Cup holder here on the side. We have two in the center. We've been using them all day and they've worked great. Nothing's bounced out. We have some cargo shelves on the bottom here. Place for your cell phone. Maybe a, a can of pop or something like that. I don't know. I, I don't know if these cargo shelves are that useful, to be honest with you, because they're very shallow. Yeah, we put something in there and there's just, they weren't working that great. Just something to think about. By the way, speaking of the seat, here's your adjustment for the seat right there. So you push that. I can't do it because I'm filming with one hand, but you'll pull this forward. So it'll go forward and back and not very much. It's like three inches, if that. I had it all the way forward when Mrs. Nutton Fancy was driving it. It still wasn't far enough forward for her. And this height was really high for her. Her left foot was dangling. She couldn't even touch anything with it. She looked like an eight-year-old driving this thing. So if you're tall like me, you'll love it. If you're super short, like five foot, your foot's going to be dangling. You may have to do something to give it a rest. Um, I think they could do a better job putting dead pedals and all these things, make it adjustable. That would be something. Gas, brake down there. Here's your vents right here. I did notice when the train got super, super bumpy, and it did, these vents would close. Also, I noticed that this panoramic rear view mirror, when it got bumpy, would do this. So, and this is not adjustable. So Polaris needs to improve this. You, these should be on really tight pivot points. Like you, you almost have to like wrench them to change their direction. Same with the vents. Make these really stiff because over time they're going to loosen up, right? Just a tip from Uncle Nut and Fancy. Two more cup holders here. So everyone's got a place for their drink. I got a cell phone holder here. Uh, I wouldn't recommend getting the Quart. Uh, is that what they call the MB Quart uh, stereo system? Just get something like this. This is a a Sony stereo uh, system. It's Bluetooth. It's fantastic. I just hook it up to the phone or in this case through, you know, a uh, patch cord to my iPod and play music. Works good. I have it Velcro to the top here. This is a compartment that will raise up. There's a little bit of storage in there. I can't get it up because the speaker. 
but that's what I would do because it's so loud in here. I don't think you're gonna get a really awesome audio experience. Here's your glove compartment here. We got stuff in there, it's big enough. The Can-Am Defender actually has a detachable, almost like toolbox It comes out and lifts up. Gimmicky, uh, maybe not, it depends. Like if you had your wallet in there, maybe a gun in here. By the way, I do have a gun. There's a Glock 43 in here, right there in that camo container. It would be nice to just detach that and take it in. So maybe not so hokey, but with the, uh, you know, the Ranger, you're just stuck with it. Uh, I like the ratio on these cranks on the windows. They come down really fast. Another feature I really love on these windows is the cutout. It's a big cutout. And so it really is almost like driving in, uh, almost like a convertible because you have so much open area. You can hang out your arm when you're in some easy driving and really get some ventilation. It's really cool. I love the window cutout on the Ranger. Excellent. The door handles are good, like that. Uh, seat belts worked fine, no issues with that at all. Uh, ergonomically, uh, the shift lever, I thought it'd be a big deal is how it's just straight shifting in the Ranger. I thought it'd be really smooth. It ain't. It ain't that smooth. Uh, you really got to kind of really crank it up to get it into gear. And that kind of surprised me. Uh, the Defender has notches and you got to kind of crank it left, crank it right to select low or high. Again, I don't have experience yet in the Defender, but I'll get back to you when I do. Here's your drive selection switch. Rocked back is turf mode. That's one wheel drive. Rock to the middle, that's two wheel drive. Forward is of course four wheel drive. You need to be at a full stop or going very slowly with uh, front and rear axles moving at the same velocity, about 20 miles an hour or less to change it. From what I know now, there's work mode, that's less power, standard, that's a little bit more power, perf mode, that's more power still. Did I notice a difference? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, we ran it mostly in standard coming up here because I think it will burn less gas. When I'm on the pavement, I'll go to perf mode, and that's what I was doing when I got a top speed of about 54, 55 miles an hour. That's what this looked like. So it goes faster than the advertised 45 miles an hour. And I heard about that a lot with the Ranger. And my research is like, how fast did the Ranger go? Well, it's speed limited to 45. Well, not this one and it's stock. The owner didn't do anything. It just is out of box and it's doing 54, 55 miles an hour, which is good. The Can-Am Defender is faster from what I know. It's like 62 miles an hour out of the box, maybe 65 depending. And those were that's with no mods. Now here's your screen right here, LCD information screen. Uh, I switched it back to turf mode, but it's not going to do anything because the CVT isn't running right now. So it's going to stay in the mode that it was in. It's got to be running, of course. Uh, the T stands for timer. So there's timer one, timer two. There's your volts, engine hours, service intervals. I think that's what that is. Total time, engine, temperature, odometer. And we're back to that. And then you press this mode and that will change it from RPM. Hopefully the reflection isn't too much. Engine temperature, miles per hour. That's pretty much where I leave it. RPM, and there you go. So it's a nice basic LCD screen. We've got RPM on this side. We've got a nice fuel gauge right here and a speedometer over here. Uh, ergonomics, that's what we're talking about right now. Now here's the meat and potatoes of this beautiful HVAC version. Your air conditioning and heating. So I believe the way this works, and I say I believe because we didn't really use it because it's such a nice day out here today, <coughs> is uh, you'll turn this on, and this is both heating and cooling, and you'll just set your temperature, and it automatically adjusts that temperature. Here's your fan velocity right here. If you turn this switch off, then all you're doing is fan, right? Now the Defender has an advantage of this in having a two-stage compressor. So on a really hot day, which we had in Utah, like a lot, uh, let me turn this off so I don't kill my battery. Uh, you know, it's going to need engine RPM to get it cool, but a Defender has a two-stage compressor. So even at idle, from what I told, the Max XT will keep you cool. Here's your light switch right here. 
So if we rock it to the bottom, that it's completely off, it'll give you a blue light switch down there to show you, let me turn this fan off, to show you how to find it. If you go center position, that's dim. Upper position, that's bright. And you'll see a repetition here on the top. And also you'll see this illuminate bright too. Sorry, I'm not showing it to you too good. Only the best production techniques in the Nut and Fancy project. You're welcome. You freezing out there? Oh my gosh, it's so cold. <laughs> okay, so getting back to this though, let's talk to the missus. You wouldn't come up here in an exposed ATV, would you? No, I wouldn't. How about when it's 100 degrees out in the desert like it was this summer all the time? I wouldn't. It's miserable, dude. I mean, I, I didn't get out on my motorcycle because of that. It's just miserable. But here it's yeah. fully enclosed. I have this window down now, but let's put this sucker up. And it's complete shelter. So actually, if you're doing an outing, you can just have lunch here. You know, and you're in cab. You don't even have to bring a tent or anything. I, you know, I don't know about sleeping in it, but for having lunch, plenty of room. Look how roomy it is. And I've sat in the back here and the, the leg room is pretty excellent. Here's your grab bar. It runs the full length of the back of the seat. It's fantastic. You like the grab bar, don't you? I'm pretty much stand up. Check that out. She's five foot and a quarter inch, she tells me. Headrests in the back seats. Again, the padding on the seats is fantastic. I do think you could fit three adults in the back, two adults and one dogness for sure. Just not way fat people. No, it, it won't work. And I, how does it work? If you're like a big guy, two big guys in a 50, 50 inch, how does that work? Mm -hmm. But I could see four big dudes in this. This would work. I mean, oh, I would look yeah. at my weight because yeah. there is a payload yeah. capacity on this. And then with cargo and stuff, I'd be real careful. You might be tasking your motor, so just something to consider. Here's your overhead light in this version right here. Not on because I don't think uh, it comes on without the key on. Now, the dude put some type of speaker system in it. This isn't from me. It's like a home theater system. He has an inverter in the back. It's pretty funny. We haven't used it at all, but it's just with a rental. He's like, yeah, dude, you can rock out. Haven't used it at all. Coming to the end of the review. It's so sad. Um, let's talk to the missus real quick. So... Overall impression. I like it. It's cool, isn't it? I like it. There is a lot of room. Yeah, so you would definitely come out on adventures in this, right? Mm hmm Yeah. Comfortable over the bumps? I mean, we navigated some pretty, really pretty, pretty gnarly really terrain, didn't we? Yeah. It was warmer back here, of course, where in this corner. Oh, you feel the engine heat coming yeah. through? Yeah. Which is fine with me. I like it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, the can by the way, has headrests up here. I think oh, really? Polaris offers them as an accessory, but this one doesn't have it. I didn't really notice it today. We didn't run with helmets because do you wear helmets in your Jeep? I don't see people in Jeeps wearing helmets. It's like a Jeep. I'm not going to wear a helmet unless I'm attacking something really gnarly. Then I would helmet up for sure. Uh, but no headrests in this particular version. I'm sure you can add I them mean, if the you want. I mean, the seatbelts are great. They, you could they tell are great. when we were going. I mean, it's like... They're holding you in? Yeah, you weren't going to go anywhere. Oh, look at how sweet she is with mom. Fun having you along. And again, this is the advantage of a high quality side-by-side -side like this. Again, enclosed because Mrs. Nothing Fancy ain't going to come out here when she's getting blown away by this 20 mile an hour, maybe 30 mile an hour wind it's now. Awful. It's blowing out there, it's isn't awful. it? It is cranking. I hope the guys could hear me on the, on the microphone. I really do. Cool. But having you guys with me and for people watching this video, taking their friends and families with them and their their pets it's huge it's huge uh you can do that on regular atv but not in this at this comfort level prefer the enclosed like right now if this is a regular atv i'd be fighting uh, the wind they couldn't hear me i'd have to be swallowing this mic so they could hear me this wind now what i would say guys is look very carefully at other inexpensive or i should say less expensive options than this perhaps a used jeep those things are mountain goats too they go everywhere you can get a used Jeep for a lot less than you could this thing. Carries about as much, you know, probably about as comfortable, but it's going to be wider. I think the ride is harsher. On every Jeep I've ever been in, we're bouncing all over the place. You're getting there, but it's not really comfortable. I love the suppliant ride of this. It soaks up the bumps. That's huge to me. And it's narrower, 65 inches versus 75 inches on like a Rubicon. And then against a full-size truck, they're usually about 80 inches. So I can fit this into a lot more places. All right, wrapping it up, get sad. Feature length, side-by-side -side UTV review. Uh, a couple things I wanted to say is uh, we did notice while riding along, and this is a newer North Star, there were some rattles in here. It's all plasticky. 
I know, but I, here, here's what it sounded like. I'm going to just roll in the video right now. been in all day. I've only used four-wheel drive a couple times. Look how rocky it is here. Yeah. Dude, I'm gonna go right over this one. A little bit bumpy. Hard to navigate on a 500 pound motorcycle. doing this fast in my truck or a Jeep that no, just get destroyed with the bumps. Be uncomfortable. Okay, so it is what it is. There's some rattling going on, and I think it's going to get worse as this thing gets older. How does it compare against a Can-Am? Don't know. Honda? Don't know. But again, I'm focusing on fully enclosed, factory enclosed HVAC versions of side-by-side. -side. So oh, what's that one? The Honda Pioneer and the Kawasaki's. I, I'm really not considering those because they, as of yet, don't make such a, a, a creature. I uh, forgot to mention this. Under-seat storage here in the Ranger. It's decent. It's not you know, voluminous. There's something there. Uh, you have a really nice area for either a small action packer, maybe a cooler. Our cooler almost fits under there, not quite. The Can-Am has a really cool thing where it has a box that lifts out. So there's a box and it has a flat floor. I think that's a better system than this. <laughs> and when you fold these seats up, by the way, I'm not going to do it now. It's not a flat floor. They're actually on a base. So you never really have a flat floor in the Defender you do. And for me, that's a huge advantage because I can stack a ton of guns back there, camping equipment, winter equipment, snowshoes, whatever I need to. You can still fit it in the Polaris. It's going to you know, require a little bit of creativity. Wrapping it up. Get sad. Feature length video coming to an end. This is a nothing fancy project. We are the first gear adventure channel, least in video form that I know of. Still going strong. Thanks to my friends in the Nut Fancy Project, my Patreon members. Please join. The link is below. Keeps us going. Keeps us cranking along. Giving you, hopefully, fun and entertaining content like this. Many more adventures to come. Who knows? Maybe we have some side-by-side -side adventures to show you with Mrs. Nutton, with Dogness, with maybe some of you guys. Maybe I invite some Patreon guys out to ride with me in a side-by-side, -side and we go somewhere, and we shoot some AR-15s or something fun like that. Yeah, it's a long video, but honestly, the internet needs it. There's a dearth of information on this type. I mean, it is bad. Uh, and I also think the catalogs of both Polaris and uh, Can-Am are awful. They just don't give enough information. It's, it's confusing between the models and types. They need to go over all their catalogs and, and get a lot better. So another reason why I'm putting this video out. Okay, signing off from a very windy mountaintop. This has been the Nut and Fancy Review on the Polaris Ranger XP1000 2020, at least as far as I know, North Star. If I get more experience in this, I'll come back, do a video. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe, support me on Patreon. Lieutenant Colonel Nut and Fancy signing off. See you later.
bet that's leftover snow though. Yeah. It's been in shade a lot. Also really fun to drive when you're off-road. On-road it sucks. Off-road, really fun. Yeah. I think it's a lot funner than a truck. Way funner. Because yep. you can haul butt in this thing, man. It soaks it up. It goes. Just a machine. Speaking of on-road. And the fun ends.